reaching a big milestone in another big year. Time just keeps on marching on, that is crystal clear. 23 full years of questing, no banks or deaths, I've got my tricks. RuneScape 3, Hardcore Ultimate Iron Man, questing through 2006. Welcome back to March 15th, 2006. Recipe for a disaster. So many council members here to save. We're going to be going around the table in a clockwise fashion. It's an order to do things, and that should work. Freeing everybody on the council here obviously requires being in this room, so the first part of Recipe for Disaster is required. But there are also other requirements. Starting off here for the dwarf. Just a fishing contest. So let us start with the dwarf here. How do I protect you, I wonder? To protect our short, angry friend from the Culinaromancer's magics, I suggest that you seek out his father within the mountain tunnel that he guards. His fondness of rock cakes could prove key in freeing him. Alright. Look at the Quest information here. Dwarf. This gives us everything here. If we look at the journal, it just tells us which person we need to talk to. Unlike the actual starting another Cook's Quest portion here, which actually says what items are required. And so, we just need to go get the items with a list ourselves. We're making various dishes to save all the council members, and so we need to make the dishes. For this one, we need a variety of things, like this bowl here, specifically a bowl of water. And then something we can do to make this all work nicely is buy a lot of the pieces of food for the recipes and such from the food chest here. Starting off with not very many, continues to go up. Quantities, reasonable enough. We need a bucket of milk, a pot of flour, and an egg. Respawn times on these, also a whole situation. That should be good. Also, we're going to need a few other things as we continue in the quest here. But we can pick those up while we're in the area. So, that should be fine. We need to go to the Mountain Tunnel under White Wolf Mountain. So we were just going to head over that way. Definitely a bit of a tunnel they got here. Nothing super crazy. Here is a whole bunch of dwarves here. We need to talk to his father. So oh, an older dwarf. Sun, time bubble, cold aromancer, freeze, rock cakes. Hmm. I have absolutely no clue what you're on about. Sit down, catch your breath, and explain, please. Okay. Your son, the one who guards the tunnel entrance. Oh, I, Good lad he is. Well, he's at a special meeting, and he's frozen by the Culineromancer. Okay, you lost me again. I just got back from visit him up top. He's fine. He's in a time bubble. Oh, no. No, he's quite all right. That was last week. I need your rock cakes to free him from it. You're delusional. Never would old Roak give away his special recipe. Now for all the golden nectar from the rising sun. Golden nectar from the rising sun, he says. He's got a secret recipe. How exciting. Let's go to the golden sun. It's right here. In Falador. Golden nectar. Emily. What can you tell me about dwarves and ale? Um, they like it? No, no, no. I mean, what kind of ale do they drink? 
Well, I know for sure that they enjoy my special recipe. Oh, would you tell me? And lose money? I think not. Hmm. I could offer you some in return. How about 200 gold? You're sure you haven't got any more? Just 200, honest. Now, just don't pay no attention to my 5.8 million coins I have here. Oh, only have 200 on me. Don't worry about it. Hand it over then, and I'll tell you the secret. Hand over 200 gold. Mmm, the secret is in the gold. Drop a gold coin into Asgardian Ale, and you'll get this weird golden ale that the dwarves seem to love. I think they're genetically attracted to gold. All right. An Asgardian Ale. Ales you serve in. Just get Asgardian Ale, please. Likes. No shop menu for this. Just need to go through dialogues. There's a few things that you need to go through dialogues to purchase. Can be a little bit awkward. That's alright. We're gonna get some extras here. Always a good plan. And we got any nails. So not only did we pay for the information, we also paid for all the drinks here. Use a coin with the ale. You drop a coin with the ale and watch it dissolve. That does bring up some questions about what Asgardian ale is like. If it can just dissolve entire coins. It's pretty wild. Very acidic or something. But anyways, it becomes an Asgoldian ale. We've decided to name it here. Which is a fantastic decision. Asgardian with gold. Asgoldian. There you go. That just makes sense. That just makes sense. We're going to bring these all the way back to the dwarf. Just running through Taverly here in completely normal fashion. We'll worry about all that later. Head on into the cave. And we're just right back. Not the engineer. His name is now Roak, since we actually know his name now. Change that. Interesting. Here, have a drink. Hand it ale to the dwarf, who slurps it with a noise of a thousand seals celebrating a rain of fish. Is that what I think it is? Maybe. That's from the rising sun. The barmaid there will never tell me the recipe she uses. It's divine. Speaking of recipes, no, I swear as I'll never tell. The dwarf nurses the very last drops of the pint, as if he'd really like some more. How would you like some more? Where'd he go? Underneath us, wild. Here, have another. Don't mind if I do. All right, the dwarf looks a bit drunk. I think you deserve another pint. Don't mind if I do. He's looking a little more drunk. I'm sure another pint will go down nicely. Don't mind if I do. He's getting several beers later. Right, the dwarf looks very drunk. I'm sure another pint will go down nicely. Don't mind if I do. Oh, we're just going out of control here. These last two were unnecessary. I'm just gonna drop that. Depends how things go. Ah, you're me best, mate. Mate. You're a good friend, Roak. Do you think you could do me a favor? For you, Hardcore Ultimate Iron Man, Arctic. For you, I'd, I'd just lie down a slope of thistles with no helmet on. I don't need you to do that, friend. Just something as simple as baking me some of your wonderful rock cakes. Hmm? For your good friend. For you, anything. For a price, of course. Good, I'm sure I have some gold somewhere. After we just told the person back at the inn that we gave her all the gold we had. We're just liars. How much gold do you want to make that cake? What? That wasn't a dream? Oh, my aching head. No, not a dream. You agreed to make me your special rock cake for a fee. Oh. A hundred gold, no less. Also, you'll need to bring the ingredients too. 
milk, flour, egg, and bowl of water. Mine gets a bowl and not a dirty bucket. And over a hundred gold. You didn't say I'd have to run around, but okay. Milk, flour, egg, bowl of water. I'll be back. We're back. Just raise some questions. The fact that bucket of water, no good. Bucket of milk, perfectly fine. Yeah. Have all the ingredients you asked for. Is that it? I can make these myself. No, you couldn't. There's a special ingredient, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. Well, here's the ingredients anyway. Hand over the ingredients, and watch the dwarf make the cake. There he goes, making it. Just puts it in the fire, and puts it on the table. There, as good as my word, hot rock cakes to my special recipe. Can I use that rock cake I made you, Hardcore Ultimate Iron Man Arctic? I appear to have lost it somewhere. Can you make me another? That's a lie. <laughs> it's right here on the table. So as all you need the ingredients. We don't. Dwarven rock cake. Red hot and glowing. Ouch. Only for dwarf consumption. I'm trying to take it here. Gloves sizzle with the heat from the hot rock cake. That's okay. It is still too hot. If you're not even wearing gloves, you can't pick it up. And if you're wearing ice gloves, it's automatically cooled. We've chosen the middle path here of picking up with regular gloves. And now we need to deal with this. There are some options. Like dropping it and going to get ice gloves. Or getting ice gloves and dropping it and picking it up. Technically we do need ice gloves at some point here, so we could do that. But then we'd have to have we wearing the cooking gauntlets for a little bit. That'd be fine. It's not like we're really going to be cooking anything anyways. But there is another option. We need to cool this down. And you would think White Wolf Mountain, right above, it's got plenty of snow and stuff. Not quite cold enough. We need something even icier. Ice Mountain is nice and icy. Fortunately, it's still not cold enough. We still get the hot rock cake here. Still sizzling. So we need to fight an ice fiend. They are the embodiment of iciness. The dying breath of the ice fiend cools your hot rock cake. There you go. Rock cakes are interesting. You try to eat it, you break your tooth and hurt yourself. <laughs> there is some situations where taking damage is useful. Not too many though, but it's definitely an option does only a little bit of damage here too, so definitely takes a while. That's alright. Unlike some of the other foods here, we're not going to attempt to eat it. Because that is the opposite of what you want to do. With these complicated recipes, getting all these different supplies. When the real goal here is to bring it back to the kitchen. Or even specifically the time bubble. Some of them need to go to the kitchen. Information. Cooking. It's got a range and everything. It's a pretty great time. Rock cake on the dwarf. You've completed recipe for disaster. Freeing the mountain dwarf. One quest point. 100 cooking XP. Or 1000 cooking XP. 1000 explorer XP. Increase access to the culinary master's chest. Good work, adventurer. I've teleported them away to safety. You only have seven council members left to protect. And we got a little sparkle there for 200 quest points. It's pretty good. Definitely making progress here. Because we've done all the quests up to this point. Next, requiring 31 cooking and technically some crafting, fishing, smithing requirements for ironmen but mostly just the 31 cooking. We're gonna go inspect Pirate Pete. How would I go about protecting this nautical fellow from the curse of the Colonaromancer then? Hmm, wait a moment, my future sense is tingling. Er, um, okay. Ah, uh, yes. To immunize him from the Colonaromancer's attack, you will need to feed him fish cakes. 
fish cakes. What, like chocolate cake with fish instead of chocolate? No, like small breadcrumbed fishy delicacies. Uh, so how would I make those then? I don't know. I'm a fortune teller, not a cook. I don't suppose it occurred to you to ask the actual cook in the room right next to next door to us. Oh yeah, I'll be right back. The cook. He is right out here. Time bubble. <laughs> hey cook. Wow, you were incredible. The way you defeated the cold answer, you made it seem so easy. Uh what? With all, with the foods and the big portal thingy and everything? I'm just glad you were around. Who knows what could have happened if you weren't able to help us. I'm sorry, I don't have any clue what you... Oh, alright. This is part of that whole time bubble thing the fortune teller told me about. So the cook outside the bubble remembers me having already saved the council members, even though I haven't actually gone and done it yet. Ah, this time travel stuff makes my head hurt. So... I don't suppose you can remember exactly how I defeated him, can you? Of course. Which bit can't you remember doing? I'm gonna go for the pirate here. I can't rem quite remember how I managed to save that pirate. The pirate? Yes, you used fish cakes, didn't you? I did? Er, I mean, I did. Out of interest, could you help me quickly with that? Can you tell me how to make fish cakes? Fish cakes? As in with fish eggs and fish milk? Don't be silly, that would never work. Can you check to see if there's a recipe for them? Of course. Checks his cookbooks, found it. Apparently you need ground cod, ground kelp, ground giant crab meat, and breadcrumbs. Okay, where do I get ground cod? Well, if you use a pestle and mortar on a raw cod, that will grind it up nicely. Ground kelp? There are apparently some kelp patches off the coast near Remington. Murphy knows more about that. As for the grinding part, all you have to do is use a pestle and mortar on it. That ought to get it sorted. Murphy also used to bring in giant crabs occasionally. He hasn't had any of them in f for a while, though. You best go and have a word with him, see if he can tell you what happened. How about the breadcrumbs? That's easy. All you have to do is use a knife to slice the bread up into tiny, tiny chunks. And what do I do with all this? I'm not entirely sure. What am I, an encyclopedia? I'll have a look through my cookbook while we wait for the ingredients. Okay, I'll go get all the stuff and bring it to you. Okay. Anything else need? Not right now. Okay. So we need various bits here. I think we really need the axe, the shovel, and tinderbox on us at all times right now. We got the inventory space, but maybe a situation here. There's the knife. That'll be useful. And for all the other bits, we kind of need to go and collect the stuff. Don't think there's really anything in the food chest that would help us. Unless we can get enough to make some bread here. We got enough for... Yeah, plenty of bread here. Take the pots of flour here. Then we just need water. Which we can get in buckets here. We really only need like one bucket. That'd be fine. We're going to do multiple here. There is a chance that things burn. But honestly, probably not a very high chance. We do have 89 cooking. Which is a little bit higher than you would typically be dealing with doing the start of recipe for disaster here. We've definitely got that going for us at least. Bucket of water, bread dough, got the pots, cook that. Still need a pestle and mortar for the other bits. I'm gonna make the breadcrumbs here though. Might also want to not get all the pieces before we get to other sections of this. But it should be alright. Knife, knife, knife. Breadcrumbs. Well, that takes care of that. The breadcrumbs heavier than the bread? Looks like the white one up there. 
But anyways, that's fine. We need to go to a few different places. And there's also more things we need than just the cod, kelp, pestle and mortar. We are also going to need some things for where we're going to be going. Let's get those together here too. I'm going to need a needle, bronze wire, and a fishbowl. All kinds of wacky stuff. Should be doable though. Mine, some tin and copper, smelt into bronze, bring into an anvil, make the wire. Three of those in total too. A lot, three is a lot of things here. Probably unnecessary, again with the cooking level. That's all right. Fish bowls made of glass, so we need to get a bucket, which we kind of just dropped over there, it's fine. Get a bucket of sand, get some seaweed, go to a range, go to a furnace, get a glass blowing pipe, and a pestle and mortar, also from a store. Just all over the place, basically. Should be great. Decided to not get the cod for inventory space purposes here. There is glass blowing pipe, molten, making a fishbowl. And we can drop the glass blowing pipe here. Used super heat to make the bronze bars. I didn't need to. Cost me nature room. That's alright. Also, I have a chisel here for another thing I want to do. We need to talk to Murphy here about a recipe for disaster. He's out here with the fishing trawler, which, for whatever reason, RuneScape 3 Iron Man cannot do fishing trawler. Anyways, Murphy, what can you tell me about giant crabs? Giant crabs? Why? I used to haul up a few of those whenever I set my nets around Remington. Why the interest? I need to get some giant crab meat and kelp. Can you tell me where I can get some? Well, the only thing I can think to do is go down there and see if there's any left. <laughs> go down there? What do you mean? As in under the water. Tell me, can you get your hands on a fishbowl? I'm sure I'll be able to put, if I put my mind to it. Why do you ask? Well, I know how to rig up a handy set of breathing gear that can allow you to keep air inside the fishbowl. You just put the barrel of air on your back, with the fishbowl over your head, and then dive over the side. Should hold enough air to keep you alive for quite some time. That sounds pretty dangerous. Not at all. I'll even weigh anchor with a chain somewhere easy to reach, so you can climb out easily enough if you run into trouble. I'm still not happy about this. Well, I can't think of any other way to check. If you come up with a better plan, then feel free to tell me. In the meantime, I'll wait. If you want me to take you diving, I'll be ready. And by the way, why are you so interested in crabs all of a sudden? I can't tell you, I'm afraid. The very fabric of space and time could collapse. Oh. Hey, well, I guess some people will do anything for a bit of fresh seafood. Yeah, yeah. Ahoy there, up for a bit of a swim? I certainly am. Great, I'll sh sort that fishbowl out for you. Murphy attaches some tubes to the backpack and the fishbowl and puts a rubber hose inside. There you go. Are you sure this is safe? Sure, it's as sound as my ship. That's a problem because the ship is constantly full of holes. Again, not that we would know. We can't go on the ship for no reason. <laughs> Want me to take you out then? Not just yet. We should probably put on the diving gear first. Be here when you change your mind. Diving apparatus. Helmet to make this work. And the fishbowl helmet. Beautiful. If we put these on here. We're looking absolutely wild. Got a bit of a mask on there too. The eyes are amazing. And just a little backpack barrel thing. Wild stuff. Now this is the part of the quest where it would have been a really good idea to not have already picked up all the other pieces here. Because there's a weight limit on diving of 27 kilograms. 
due to changes in how much things weigh, we're okay. Just barely here. Boots of lightness, definitely helping. Realistically, we probably would have needed to get rid of at least the rune here. That would weigh quite a bit. But somehow, things work out. We can't change how much things sell for, how much things weigh. We're working with what we got here. And having to out and go get them back later. Not a massive difference. We get punished with more inventory space usage, so that's all right. Race, ready for a dive? Yes, let's go diving. Okay, let's be off then. We're gonna go diving. Okay, see you soon, Murphy. Good luck, I'll wait anchor. Climb up the chain to get aboard. And away we go. Jumping straight in. It does make a lot of sense to have weight limits on this. Because we are swimming around in a full suit of armor here. It's pretty wild down here. Can't do a lot of things while swimming. We can do some stuff though. Like, look at all the fish and stuff. Here's the kelp. That'll be great. And we've also got rocks under our cabin entrance. And the crabs. And also, moger guards. They are sea ogres. Try to open up the fence here. Hey, Nung says no fishies into big crunchy claws. You wants crunchies, you talk to him and hope he not hungry. Talk to Nung. Hey. Hey, silly fishy with the round head. Me? Yeah, what kind of fishy you was thinking you are? I'm not any kind of fishy, or fish. Well, what you do doing here if you know a fishy? Well, I'm here to try to get some giant crab meat. This fishy is a funny fishy. What's this fishy wanting? You see those big crabs? I want one of those. You was here to steal in my big crunchy claws? No, I should smash your stupid round head. Always the big nettings was taking me crunchy claws. I put them in the cages, and now you come and get them. Swim away, little fishy, or I eat you till you're dead. Wait, could I buy some of the crab meat? Silly roundhead fishy wants to swap big crunchy claws. Nah, you no real deal. I bet you no do none big favor. Seriously, I need to get that meat. I'll do you a big favor if you want. Ah, silly roundhead fishy. If you get Nung five big skippy skins, then maybe Nung thinking you okay. Big skippy skins. Yeah, the big skippies live over there. Oh. You need lots of big, big stones to get down there. Then you kill the big skippies and bring the skins to Nung. You do this, then maybe Nung let you swap the big crunchy claws. Okay. Go kill. Mudskippers. And get Mudskipper Hines. This whole underwater area. Definitely a whole place. Not a huge amount of things to do. That's alright. Pick up rock. Rock. As we're swimming around, we need to weigh ourselves down here with rock. And some more rocks. And Surprisingly, a rock. Enter underwater cavern entrance. And we settle to the, settle to the ground here. And now we can run around and fight while also still underwater. Which is pretty hilarious. Mudskippers. They have very little health. Poke. Sweep. And you. And one more. And that is mud skipper skins. And using up quite a bit of the inventory space. Potential problem. Weight is now 30 kilograms. Try to leave here. We still float. I guess it's only for going out. 
with the ship. Once we're out here, we can pick up more things and it's okay. We might not be able to swim back up the anchor, though. So, could be a potential problem. Anyways, back to Nung. Nung, I have your giant mudskipper skins. What you say? Has your silly rounded headed fishy got the big skippy skins? <sighs> yes, I have the big skippy skins. Silly round headed fishy done good, gimme. Yeah, the round head fishy does a good big favor for Nung. I am thinking you's okay enough to swap the giant crunchy claws now. Great. How much do you want for them? You's got to get me something to make these hides to a cloak and flippers and hat. Then I lets you have all the big crunchy claws you can get. But it not be easy. Well, I'll do it. What do I need? An item of ancient power? Something from the deepest, darkest dungeon in the world? What sort of monsters will I need to fight? I must grab some potions too. Will there be traps? Should I bring cakes? Yeah, it real dangerous for a fishy. He's gotta go up to the topsies, where you gotta get a needly thingy and some wiry stuff. A needle. Yeah. And bronze wire. Yeah. Three wiry stuffs. So all I have to do is bring you three rolls of bronze wire and a needle. I can have all the giant crabs I can kill. Yeah, but you need sneaky round. Head fishy. The Topsies has not water for a little fishy like you to, to be breathing. It real dangerous. Yeah, sounds it. The surface. Dangerous. Which is interesting because the mogers come out of the water a little bit when you bother them. Probably just for a short period though. It is definitely very difficult to do any smelting underwater. Anyways, Nung, I have the needle and wire. Nung thinks this is a useful fishy he finds. Gimme. Nung have all the wiry stuff and needly things he needs to make the biggestest skippy skin hat ever. Use a good little fishy. You eat as many big crunchy claws as you want. Maybe you get big and strong like Nung. Thanks. The crabs now. I need rocks again. Hey, Nung says no fishies. I spoke to Nung. He said it was okay. Well, if Nung said it okay, then go ahead. Nice look, we're fine. We're still holding the other rocks, I guess. On oh, a plus side, that gave us more space in the inventory here. Crabs. Get some crab meat. But also, some other things like a fresh crab claw. Grab some ziff. Oysters. Grab the meat here. Wait for the big ones to respawn. There's interesting stuff here. Crabs, crabs. We got the crab meat. We can grind that up for another part of the fish cake recipe. Find the big crabs. Not much health, again. And then we can craft the fresh crab claw into a crab claw. Amazing. You saw on the interface there, there's another crab bit that can be had. Another just crab claw here. We need the other piece. Crab claw. Fresh crab claws. We need crab shell for the other one. We're gonna keep trying to get that. Not that we need it for anything. It's just neat. I just need to see neat things. We also need to go and pick up the kelp outside here too. Eventually we'll get this drop. Shouldn't be too rare. They're just crabs. Yeah, two more kills. Fresh crab shell. Make this into a helmet. 
Technically, there's also a chance of breaking those. So, but again, our crafting level is 76. So, we can get away with quite a bit here. In as far as requirements for things, pick some kelp. Pick the kelp. Hard to say how much kelp we have since we can't see the inventory. I keep picking it. Not giving us any messages. Don't have enough free space. I guess we're fine. Let's see if we can climb up the chain on the anchor here. Since we're weighed down with crab meat and crab accessories and kelp. Climb the anchor. Drop all of our rocks. So that made us light enough. That'll work. Get back on the boat. And we're back here. Beautiful. Put these back on. Grind up some of the kelp. There you go. Kelp. 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 And we can look at the crab stuff here. It's a crab claw, which goes in the glove slot and lets you have a crab claw. And also the crab helmet, which is just amazing. Hilarious. Don't need those though, obviously. So we're gonna drop the crab claws and the helmet. We can also get the diving set back whenever needed. So that's okay. Don't need the chisel because we've finished that. So now we just need some cod. That's easy enough to get over in Catherine. Gonna go big net fishing. Unfortunately, that also means we're gonna have all the other things that you can fish up from big net fishing. Probably just gonna have to drop all those. Just gonna get three cod here. Should be fine. And then it's back to Lumbridge. Also, before it upgrades again, we should check out the items chest here. For completing one bit, we now have bronze level gloves here and the egg whisk. So let's symbol the latest one here. Potentially can't equip that yet. Various shop unlocks slash requirements. That's okay. They had a wooden spoon. Next is an egg whisk. Clearly a superior weapon, obviously. I'm going to get the fancier gloves later. Or not. There is glove related situations we're gonna need to deal with. Anyways, grind the cod. And we got everything ready to go here. Talk to the cook. Get more of the information, again, about the pirate. Fish cakes. Yes, I did. And with that, I have all the ingredients for fish cakes. Great. Just like before, I've been reading the recipe and I know how to make the fish cakes now. It's pretty simple, actually. All you have to do is use the ingredients on each other and then cook the fish cakes on a range. That's it? Yes. Thought there was a page missing from the cookbook because it seemed really, really so easy. Turns out, it really is that easy. There you go. Smash everything together to make raw fish cakes. Technically in the cakes section. Brilliant. And cook them. Cook. Cook. And cook. Definitely probably could have gone away with only one. That's all right. Back in time. This one has an eat option that would actually eat them though, so. Taste as that looks, I'm sure you want to eat it and not save it for Pirate Pete. This one, yes, I'm hungry. <laughs> nah. Good warning message there. Use it and complete. Freeing Pirate Pete. One quest point, 1,000 cooking, fishing, smithing, and crafting XP. Ability to Fight more crabs, as long as you have the diving apparatus. 
go to the Mogre camp, cook crab meat, crab shells and claws, which made into the helmet and gloves, diving underwater, and later trading in crunchy claw tokens for giant crab pets. And also, increased access to the chest. That's the best part. Six to go. Next, continuing down the line here. Unsurprisingly, requiring goblin diplomacy. We got bent nose and wart face. Oh, which one of these am I actually meant to be saving? Hmm, neither of them were at the previous council meeting. The goblins get through leaders so fast, I find it hard to keep track. Heard the last leader died during a game of pin the tail on the basilisk. Well, no worries. I'm sure if you just find something that they'll both eat, then that should work, I hope. Remembering the last time I dealt with these two, that may be easier said than done. Well, you could try asking some of the other goblins in their village for ideas. You should be able to find it just north of Falador. Unless they've decided the sky is the wrong color there or something. Wouldn't surprise me. Would not surprise me. Eat that cake. Okay. Once again, we can get some supplies from the food chest downstairs. And check out what the new stuff is. Which is also a plus. For completing the second saving, the items are now iron gloves and a spork. Clearly superior to the spoon. That just makes sense. Food-wise, there's a few things in here we can get. Like a bucket to fill with water. Some spice. Very spicy. And more bread. Which again, we can make with another pot of flour. We need a knife, an orange, fishing bait, charcoal, and some dye. Which we need to get from other places. That's okay. Make this bread again here, though. Pick up the knife from upstairs. That solves at least some of the pieces we're looking for. Knife. There. And an orange. Fill from the sink. Bucket of water. Make bread dough. Fill the sink again. Bucket of water. There we go. Cook the bread. Also very, very easy. Fantastic. Okay. But where are we going for all these pieces of things we need? Fishing bait. We can get from a fishing store. That should be fine. For the dye, we can pick one up near our, our doin. Just on the floor. Purple dye. An orange, we'll probably get that from the Tree Gnome Stronghold cooking supplies. And charcoal we can purchase from Venturing Store or Jungle Store. There's various stores. We've seen charcoal before, fishing bait before, the dyes on the floor, orange before. Just picking stuff up all around. A very interesting selection of items. We'll see exactly why we need all these. Over in Goblin Village. Which has got a slight graphical rework here. Not, not this one. Just moving a few walls around and stuff. Couldn't talk to the generals here. See if we get any information from them at least. General Bent Nose and Workface. Can I ask about what food you like? What? Why? Need to save you from the Chloromancer's spell. From whose what? At the council meeting in Lumbridge, there was a, a Chloromancer trying to cast an evil spell on you. Lumbridge. Oh yeah, me remember. Me was goblin representee thingy. No you weren't, that was me. Never mind that. Don't you remember the spell? All me remembers is Warface stealing chair. 
where at your chair, you shouldn't have even been there. But I was there before you were, so I get a chair. Never mind. They're not going to be very helpful, clearly. Always arguing, these guys. The whole situation. Downstairs, which is a new place. A cauldron. And goblin cook. Hey there. You're just the person we're looking for. Go away, human. Me's busy here. Busy doing what? Me's working on a new way of cooking. We'll be the most famous just goblin cook ever. Could potentially be the most famous already by being kind of the only goblin cook we've seen. What well, what is this new way of cooking? Got the idea from the dwarves. Saw them playing with something. They called it multi canned none or summit. Use lots of heat and bright light. Wouldn't tell my knuckles how it worked, of course, but I figured it out. My knuckles is smarter than them. Now I'm gonna be able to cook food better than anyone and faster too. Yes. I need your help. Wart face and bent nose have been trapped by a terrible curse. Oh, maybe that's why Mud Knuckles not been shouted at recently. Hmm, suppose me should help. But first, Mud Knuckles must finish experiment. Unfortunately, it is missing one vital ingredient. What do you need? Maybe I can get it for you. It is called charcoal. Mud Knuckles, here you can get it from shops on Kramja. But the customs officers, they know like goblins anymore. Burnt trees, they good too. Smash them up with hatchets. But my knuckles only know of burnt trees in the wilderness. And my knuckles too afraid to go there. Okay, I'll see what I can do. We got ours in Karanja. Worked nicely. Go away, human. Me's busy here. Busy doing what? Cooking. I've got the charcoal you were after. Really? Then no time to lose. My knuckles already have everything else. Sulfur and stuff. Sulfur? Uh, must be moving. Follow me. He's gonna do his cooking. You sure this is a good idea? Absolutely. Best idea Mud Knuckles ever had. I'm really not convinced that. Rumble, rumble, rumble. Should it shake like that? Oh no. Hide. You're fine. It. <sighs> Bright flash. What that noise? That noise? You hear that? It's the sound. And it's shaking too. And the cauldron blasts through the roof. Ah, that's Mud Knuckles at it again. <laughs> Mud Knuckles. We've survived the explosion here. Mud Knuckles. Got a cook on the wall. F of the wall is not natural tunnel position for a goblin. It worked! It did? Disagree. <laughs> Somehow we came out of this unscathed. Entire basement here has been destroyed in the sulfur and charcoal explosion. You the human who helped me. My knuckles is very grateful. We'll be famous real soon now. It's just collecting results, and so many results. On walls, on ceiling, everywhere. I think of calling it fast food, because of how fast it goes from raw to burnt, see? Do you think it will sell? Like you said, it's burnt. Oh, maybe some imperfections, but fast food will sell. People buy anything when in a hurry, even if it does taste like sawdust. Facts. <laughs> Wild. It sounds like a great idea. You think so? Everyone else thinks Mud Knuckles crazy. Seems think explosive cooking might be dangerous or something. Can't see why. Not like you gonna get food poisoning. It was very well cooked. Er, yes. I'm sure food poisoning was what they were worried about. Anyways. I need your help. Now we've helped you. Yes, yes. Mud Knuckles very grateful. How can I help? Your leaders, Wart Face and Bent Nose, have been trapped by a terrible curse. So that's why my knuckles not been shot at recently. But how can I be helping? Cooking and magic, no mix. Tried that before. My knuckles had some very angry wizards at door, 
to trying to burn staves to cook on. I need to create a dish that both the generals would eat to save them from the curse. Oh. What? And impossible. Mud knuckles try it before, but their requests, they make no sense. Why? What did they want? Well, Betnos wanted fruit in the dish, but Warface only fruit he eat is sliced oranges. That doesn't sound too bad. Maybe, but Betnos objects to the color. Anything else? Warface, he wants some nice juicy maggots. Where can I get maggots? Humans use them all the time for fishing. My knuckles think it crazy waste of maggots, mind. But each to their own. Each their own indeed. What's the problem? Bet knows not like maggots. Say they're too bland. Would only eat them if they spicier. Okay, is there anything other than orange slices and maggots? Bet knows asked for some bread in the mix. Let me guess. Wartface complained, right? Yep. Wartface think bread too crunchy. He prefers slimy or soggier food, like the maggots. So let me get this straight. I need orange slices, which aren't orange, maggots that aren't bland, and bread which isn't crunchy. Yep, about sums it up. Bring them all to me, and my knuckles will make a suitable dish. Wonderful. Well, I guess I'll have to see what I can do. Oranges, which aren't orange. Just slather some dye on there. And now we have these. Yeah, the dye of the oranges. They turn an appealing grayish brown color. Yay. Maggots that are spicy. Let's add some spice. A light dusting of spices to the maggots. And non crunchy bread. You soak the nice crispy bread to become slimy to the touch. Yay. <laughs> Yay. I have all the ingredients we need to make a meal for Wartface and Bentnose. My Knuckles is confused. Ingredients make no sense, but give them here and my Knuckles make what you need. There you go. We don't go blaming my Knuckles if it doesn't work. The Goblin hands you a bowl containing some kind of indescribable gray mush. Great, thanks. Can we eat the gray mush? No. There have been some weird things we can eat, but we refuse to consume the slop of compromise. <laughs> hilarious. Another hilarious thing is the music track down here. Too many cooks. That would later become a very amusing little bit of a video. Anyways, we got what we need here. Let's return to Lumbridge. Overall, going through and getting the information about what you need as you progress in the quests, not too bad most of the time, but it does pay to be prepared. Saves on traveling back and forth. Well, that's all right. Let's get back inside of time and give the slop to the goblins. Both at the same time. And it totally works. Quest complete. Freeing the goblin generals. One quest point. A thousand cooking, crafting, and farming XP. And increase access to the chest. Five to go. Let's go see the chest. Let's see what our next rewards are here. It'll be a great time. All the way down. In the food chest, there's just going to be a few more pieces of food. See that as we continue to later ones. But in the items chest, we've got steel gloves and the spatula. Dun dun dun. All sorts of great stuff in here. The weapons are specifically not very good compared to things you can get elsewhere. But they rival some of the lower level weapons. Of course, by the time you can get these from doing all the quests, you're most likely over leveled. So they're they're just mostly just for fun. And that's a fun time. Like we saw, 
We have five more council members to save. So this is definitely many steps, but all kinds of different steps. Next time, goodbye.